Uh, thank you all for having me here. Uh, just like to start with a, uh, a short history of war uh, and how it impacts on labor. Uh, conscription throughout its history, I think, has always been used against uh, activists, labor activists, social activists. Uh, in BC here, we have uh, basically our most famous martyr, uh, Ginger Goodwin, who was uh, executed uh, while uh, the, uh, they were trying to arrest him to put him in the military after they had uh, originally said he was not capable to be in the military. So it goes back a long way, uh, labor uh, being the military using, uh, or the government using military to go against social activists. Restrictions of freedom are also something that uh, historically have happened, uh, and uh, the union that I, that my local came from, the Canadian Seamen's Union, during the Second World War basically agreed to not uh, strike. They agreed to not ask for increase in, in their uh, conditions, their wages, and uh, they were told at the end of the war, things will be better. At the end of the war, they decided things would be better. They struck, they won the first 40-hour week in Canada, and uh, some five years later, they were destroyed by the Canadian government. They brought in uh, 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 a scab union from the United States and basically uh, took them off the ships. There was a lot of people beaten. There was uh, basically a bit of a war on the docks. There was a, a government uh, study into that, the Norris Report, where it was proven that they were brought in to uh, attack uh, Canadian seafarers. So there's a long history. Presently, we're dealing with that in, in my union right now, with the uh, Marine Facilities Restricted Area Access Clearance Program, a bizarre acronym that basically means that they're now going after workers, deciding for some reason, there's no historical reason for it, that workers are, the pro are potential terrorists, when in fact workers are the first line of defense against people that have the desire to uh, terrorize. Workers on the docks, workers on ships are not interested in having their, their work destroyed, their workplaces destroyed, or bringing in uh, things from other, but it's a union that uh, the government has never really liked. The power that the longshore workers have is fairly strong. They've kept, kept together for many years. So they've come down with legislation to uh, basically look into your background, and it's not just your background, they want to look into your parents' background, your in-laws' background, your brothers' and sisters' background, and this basically is the same stuff that happened during the McCarthy era, it's brought into today's world, in the McCarthy era you were described as a communist, now you're described as a terrorist. So labor has always had good reason to uh, be opposed to militarization, and today we have that same good reason to be opposed to militarization. Uh, I've been involved in uh, Stop War, the major uh, anti-war organization here in Vancouver, since prior to the Iraq War. And in fact, how I got involved in Stop War was I was involved with some people. We organized a cross-border rally at the Peace Arch with Americans, and it was a wonderful rally. There was some uh, uh, direct action that worked out very well. Uh, our our group was allowed to, our demonstrators were allowed to march through the borders, through the, the Canadian border, and then they marched down through the American border. There was no arrests at that time. It was a very positive start to what we were hoping. We had a meeting after that down in Seattle to try to build on that, and then 9-11 uh, happened, and basically that ended that communication. It didn't end the communication, but it made it very difficult to do anything like that at the present time, and still, still today it's, it's much more difficult. So basically, I got involved in marshalling there because there was a, a need for more peaceful marshalling. There was some disagreement with what happened at the battle at Seattle, where marshals were keeping people away from where they wanted to go. So I stepped in to try to assist and make it so that this was a demonstration for all of us. And it worked very well. So when Stop War started up, I got involved from that perspective as well. And one of the things that's happened through that relationship is that we've developed, Stop War has developed a very good relationship with Vancouver Police. Uh, right now, they work very well with us and uh, it keeps our demonstrations peaceful. It uh, and it actually has another positive in that the police, our Vancouver City Police, when we had our discussions about the peace march that happened this past weekend, the uh, sergeant from the police was saying that 
he had a call from the West Vancouver police regarding the Eagle Ridge Bluff demonstration, and they didn't know what to do. And he said, well, why don't you go talk to them? That's something that having some police force that's willing to tell other police forces, well, hey, these people aren't boogeyman or monsters. Why don't you talk to them? Find out what they want. So that has made it so that in Vancouver here, we can have our peace, peace marches and everyone knows they're going to be peaceful. There's not going to be something happen. Everything's going to be a, a nice day where people have the rights to stand out and demonstrate. And it's important that police around in Canada and around the world understand that they can work with us, that we can have our demonstrations, we can do what we need to do to be on the streets to show our support, to show our power, and not have to be battling with the police. Because we want to be able to have our children come to our demonstrations. We want to have our senior citizens come to our demonstrations. And if we're battling, that's, that, that becomes very difficult. We need to take on difficult issues. And I think the most difficult issue today is the Middle East. And I think that that is an issue that we need to discuss. It needs to be dealt with if we're going to deal with war. And I think that the, uh, I compare it back to apartheid, which my local also was very involved in the, in the anti-apartheid movement. And the beginnings of that anti-apartheid movement, we were told we were no different as Canadians to the South African whites. They went there to find a new land to work, to, they were immigrants on their land, they worked hard. They were like our hardy, uh, our hardy stock. The reality was is, is that we were not anti-white by opposing apartheid. We were pro the rights of those, black, of those individuals in, in South Africa that didn't have rights. Just in the same way, by being pro-Palestinian, we're not being anti-Jewish. We're saying Palestinians should have rights. <laughs> 